What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke, episode 233. We're going to be previewing the Collingwood Brisbane game that's happening today. So let's run the intro, jump straight into it. Just before we do jump straight into it, of course, follow me on all my social media accounts. I'll be popping up down below. If you are a new Swooper, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And if you are a returning Swooper, welcome back. Thank you so much for rejoining us. Let's just jump straight into this preview now. So tonight, Collingwood take on Brisbane at the Marvel Stadium. At the Marvel Stadium. So tonight, Collingwood play Brisbane at Marvel Stadium. It was supposed to be up in Brisbane, up at the Gabba, but because of COVID and stuff like that, had to be uh, pushed down to Marvel on the Thursday night, so Easter Thursday. And then our round 22 game against Brisbane that was supposed to be played at Marvel will now be played uh, at the Gabba up in Brisbane. So it's just a swapsies, common sense sort of thing. Um, not really much to see here, but you know it's awesome that we get three uh, games straight up in uh, Melbourne. And I think next week is um, a Giants game at the MCG. So, you know, four home games straight up. So that's pretty cool. But anyway, let's talk about um, the Brisbane Lions. So the Lions haven't had a good start to the year. They got absolutely smashed by a team that everyone thought would be bottom four, by Sydney. They got they lost by about 30-something points. And then last week, we know what happened. You know, Geelong, a uh, bit of roughhousing. They didn't get that free kick in the end. They lost by one point down in Kidinia Park. So they've started the, the season 0-2. and two, And we know historically not a lot of teams make final 0 from 2. Us being the exception, we made the grand final. But, you know, Brisbane are a good team. And you could see that from that Sydney game to that uh, Geelong game, a lot changed. Uh, their ball movement changed. You know, their, their pressure on the ball carrier and stuff like that. They were able to flip their form on a dime, and I don't think this week's going to be any different. As for us, we started off our season really poorly against the Western Bulldogs, but then we finally clicked into some gear against Carlton with sort of you know what we want to see from a Collingwood team. Lots of run, lots of run through the middle. You know, We scored 70 points up until halftime after scoring 50-odd points in the whole entire first game against the Doggies. So... There are a lot of positive signs to come out of that uh, Carlton game. Then I think there are positive signs to come out of the uh, Geelong game for Brisbane. So the last time we played Brisbane, you're going to have to cast your minds all the way back to round 15, the middle of our Queensland hub. And this was around the time where we weren't playing great football. We weren't scoring a lot. Um... We only scored five goals for that entire game. We obviously, we lost by, I think it was eight points or so. But this was the game where Brisbane just had one good quarter. Their second quarter, they kicked five goals. And in the second half, so in the third and the fourth quarter, they only kicked one goal. And we still couldn't couldn't get us over the line. And it wasn't for you know lack of trying. Crisp had 30 touches. Uh, Pendlebury had about 30 touches as well. You know, Cox kicked a, a couple of goals. We were there, but we weren't there at the same time. That that second quarter just really um, spun us around. And like I said, this was in the patch where we were only scoring a goal every quarter. Like you look at this. First quarter, we scored one goal. Second quarter, we scored one goal. Third quarter, we scored one goal. And then the last quarter, we put on um, two goals. So... You know, I wouldn't look too much into... Look, I just wouldn't look too much into last season at all. I'll keep talking about the last time we played them, but I wouldn't look too much into last season uh, at all. This was the game as well, I have to mention it, that uh, Braden Maynard took on the entire Brisbane team and they couldn't take him down. Uh, and I just love the biff and the brawl about uh, our football. Also, in this game, we had 41 inside 50s, but only 9 scoring shots. That's 22%. That is... That's classic Collingwood, you know, especially last season. Generating all that ball inside 50, not even 10 scoring shots, which is absolutely ridiculous and something that we have rectified already uh, with that Carlton game. But you can see why we just didn't win that game last year. A key matchup that uh, I can't wait to see is Darcy Moore against, you would think that he plays against Hipwood. 
Makai got a little bit of the better of him on in one-on-one situations. Uh, one-on-one situations, he scored four goals on Darcy. Darcy does good uh, defensive work. You know, good intercept marking, attacking. Um, those one-on-ones need to be tightened up a little bit. We know how good uh, Hipwood is as a player. You know, even Danaher, you could see more on Danaher at some point if, you know, him and Roughhead switch it up a little bit. Um, but more and Hipwood is something that we're going to see for the next 10 or so years, which will be a really good uh, Goliath battle. Because we know more plays about 10 or so meters off his opponent for trying to read that ball. It's just that, you know, he just has to get there a little bit quicker. Um that body contact, and we can't have, you know, Hipwood kicking four goals because that'll go a long way into Brisbane winning. Another area that I really, really, really want to look at is our turnovers and scores from turnovers. Carlton last week scored most of their goals from our mistakes and our turnovers, um, and they they cost us dearly. I think they scored six or seven uh, goals from our turnovers. So we just really got to tighten that up. I, I, I've said it, I said it last week. Playing through the corridor is high risk, high reward. But if it gets turned over, that's where the high risk is. You cough up a goal in the easiest um, position to goal. You go on the wings, it takes a while to get um, towards goal. You go through the middle, goals happen much quicker because it's a, it's a quicker uh, quicker route to goal. So, you know, from memory, we coughed up two or three goals from um, wayward kicking in the middle. Tidy that up a little bit. Still use the corridor. Don't not use it. Just tidy it up a little bit. We can't afford to give teams the opportunity um, to pile on three or four goals because of our dumb mistakes. The last matchup that I want to look at is the option not to choose Greenwood to tag Neil. Look, I know Collingwood don't really use a tagger. Sometimes they put penalty to to run with uh, you know star players like Cripps. We've seen that a couple of times and stuff like that. Neil has been subdued over the last two weeks. He's going to come out firing, especially if he doesn't have a hard tag. And we know Buckley doesn't like playing a hard tag. So does Neil come out, have 40 possessions uh, and absolutely wreck us? Or does Neil come out, have 40 possessions, but because he doesn't have a tagger, we can put our resources elsewhere, apply that pressure. His 40 disposals are worthless because we've got other systems in place. Do I want a tagger? When you've got a good player like that, you kind of have to, you know what I mean? He is their engine room. You stop him, you stop Brisbane pretty much. So, look, I think Pendles might run with him for a little bit, but we'll wait and see. But I'm very, very, uh, I'm going to keep a very close eye on how that goes down. So, the ins and outs, because I'm releasing this on the day of, we know that Chris Main is in. So, he makes his first appearance after that concussion that he sustained in the preseason. I don't mind that inclusion. Would I have liked to have seen younger kids? Yes, you know, give me a Finlay McRae. Give me uh, Bo McCreary. Um, you know, a Nathan Murphy. But good on Chris. He, I love him as a player. I love, he seems like the nicest dude as well. He's 32. This could be his last season. Just give it everything you got. Maybe he takes that Jamie Elliott pressure forward situation. We talked a bit about it in my last video. And coming out, obviously, Jamie Alley with an injury and Trey Rusco has been omitted. But he is an emergency, so we could see him as a sub again. My prediction is that I think we are actually going to get the hell of the better of uh, Brisbane. I reckon we're going to beat them by 37 points. Um, and I've got for my big call, side bottom kicking three goals. That's a very big left field Luke wants um, side bottom in the forward line. So bad call. But that's my big call. Anyway guys, this has been my preview of the game. Let me know your thoughts down below. Leave your predictions. Leave your big calls. Uh, I appreciate you ever so much. I know I've been pumping out content, content, content uh, recently. I think this is my third video in a row. So the Review of this game will go up on Saturday probably, um, and we'll take, or, or maybe Friday, and then I'll take a little bit of a break over the weekend. But anyway, that's here, neither here nor there at the moment. So until then, like, comment, subscribe, tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets, and until next time, double shackers, sweep you later. Ooh,
la la.